Okay, now we are officially live. So for those who are watching from YouTube, it is great to have you. God bless you so much. Jesus is your king. Jesus loves you. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Today we're going to do some Bible reading in the Old Testament. We do this pretty much every day. A uh, bit of Old Testament Bible reading. And we do two live streams a day. So later on it will be... Um, Matthew, I think we could be finished Matthew already. We do New Testament Bible reading, two chapters. So, for those who are watching right now from YouTube or TikTok, God bless you. We're going to get into Genesis 40 to 42 today. And then we'll leave the chat open after Bible reading for any prayer requests or questions etc right praise god so we're gonna pray in a moment just chill out for a second though allow a few more to join in uh internet's been quite bad today but it should be okay it should be good for the love so yeah praise god awesome let me see if i can just quickly uh check something marco welcome how are you man and everyone else joining in, God bless you guys. If, you, uh, if you're ready for Bible reading, uh, just put a thumbs up in the chat. Marco, thanks for the heart me there. I appreciate that. Uh, and also when you hear the word of God, what I see as more effective and, and it's been confirmed through someone else that I was watching as well, is that when we hear the word of God, don't necessarily um, grab your own Bible to make sure that you're reading line by line. You can do that. No one's stopping you. And I'm certainly not stopping you from reading from your own Bible. But what's so cool about just listening to the Word of God is that when you're not reading it by yourself and you're not hearing your own voice, you're hearing someone else's voice. So if you were to read it would raise a slight distraction. So when you read the Bible, read the Bible by yourself and read, read aloud. I would recommend reading aloud. Um, but when you're listening to someone read the Bible, I think it's better to minimize distraction to listen without reading. Um, that's just something that I've been kind of learning recently. And, um, I think that it's a cool idea to think about because I never really understood this, but now it's making more sense. Um, your camera is amazing. Where did you get it from? Thanks, man. Uh, I just actually had a whole bunch of camera gear before that I got used to using and it was going to be used for ministry videos for a friend of mine, but it didn't work out very well. He took all the equipment back. So I was left with no camera equipment and I prayed and I asked God. So he blessed me with this camera that I'm using right now. I got it from takealot.com, which is a South African online uh, shop. If, you, if you're not from South Africa, takealot.com is a South African version of Amazon or uh not eBay, like Amazon, and uh, I don't know what other online shops are popular that you guys use. Like Alibaba is more like international, but yeah, um, it's a Sony ZV-E10 camera. It's one of the, the smallest or the lowest range Sony cameras, but it, it still does a great job. Uh, but the lens that I'm using really makes... Uh, makes it a lot better. I'm using a Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens, so you get that good, that nice bokeh, and 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 that kind of stuff. So yeah, but all glory to God. You know, He blessed me with um this camera with this mark. It's not the most expensive stuff, but it's really it's quality stuff, and uh, so it does the job. And I give glory to God for it. So yeah, um, and uh welcome to the lab 
I've increased the volume of the background music from 5 to 7% basically. So I just uh, want to check if the audio is not too loud or if it's just like a lot better. It's, it's much better actually because I was listening to some recordings and I noticed that the background instrument was a little low so I just had to tweak that anyway that's just a test I wanted to get out of the way Richard I see you've joined in good morning it must be quite early in the morning for you what time is it your side uh, Richard let me know and uh, God bless you man welcome to the live Richard um, I've had so much to do guys I've had a lot to get to and and I'm actually late to the live so I apologize on that but we're gonna pray right now and then we're gonna get into some Bible reading it's gonna be Genesis chapter 40 through to chapter 42 and we're gonna learn more we're gonna grow more amen and we're gonna spend spend time with God guys you gotta know that when you read the Bible you are spending time with God when you pray you are spending time with God when you minister, you're inviting God to work through you. Unless if you do it for yourself, then it's a different story. But when you really minister after God has assigned you and called you to minister, when you uh, read your Bible and pray, that's ways we spend time with God. Spending time with God isn't only in prayer, isn't only when you bow your head and close your eyes to pray. Spending time with God can be in many ways many ways uh richard it is 25 okay we would say 25 to 8 so it's 735 735 in where you're at in america i believe so great um excuse me yeah so let's pray let's give this time to god and then we will get into the bible reading session amen let's pray heavenly father god we just come before you in the name of Jesus we praise you father we honor you we glorify you hallowed be your name father for you are holy you are worthy and by your mercies we have breath in our lungs so I pray Lord today in this live stream that you would have your way in our hearts in our lives Lord as we continue to grow in faith, Lord, I just pray that your word will speak to us, Lord, and that we will come to know you more. So, Holy Spirit, I invite you to bring to each and every one of our hearts and minds wisdom, revelation, and understanding of the scriptures. Father God, awake our hearts that we will learn to fear you, that we will learn how to fear you and what the fear of the Lord is father I pray Lord a blessing as well Lord for whoever joins this live today I just pray that you bless them Lord with an increase of your love in their hearts in their lives father an increase of purpose and faith in their lives father God I give this live stream into your hands Holy Spirit I ask you to have your way here today we bless your name father and we thank you for what you are doing in our lives all the glory all the praise and honor to you father god in jesus mighty name we pray amen glory to god guys we are just about ready so please take note that i will be putting the chat off as we read so there will be no distractions and then after that, I'm going to put the chat back on. So if you guys have any questions or any uh, prayer requests, you can also put that in the chat. Um, and then that's it, guys. We just let, let God have his way here. And we thank the Holy Spirit for doing what he wants to do here today on this live. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and the time here is 1537. That's cool, Jerome. Ah. Uh, I'm also in South Africa and it's the same time in Johannesburg that, compared to your time in Cape Town. Um, I actually stayed in Cape Town for 11 weeks um, 
last year. And uh, yeah, it's great. But praise God, guys. Um, I want to encourage you to tap the screen a little bit. Bring the likes in to bring more people in. If you want to share the love as well, share the love to, to someone who needs to hear the word of God. And let's get into the session. So straight over to uh, Bible Gateway. That's where I, where I watch from. Uh, not watch, read from. And um, so, amen. So Genesis chapter 40, we're going to continue reading about Joseph, which is a very cool, very interesting character in the Bible that we can really learn a lot from even though it's in the Old Testament, because God is good and He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Glory to God. Let's read from Genesis chapter 40 right now. It came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Then the butler... Sorry, just let me put my phone there. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream both of them each man's dream in one night each man's dream and each man's dream with its own interpretation and joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad so he asked pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his lord's house saying why do you look so sad today And they said to him, We each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded. Its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to, you, uh, to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were, were uh, when you were his butler. But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house, for indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also I have done nothing here that they should put me into the, the dungeon. So Joseph was in this dungeon, this prison, um, and he was innocent. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three, uh, the three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now we came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, 
that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. So we see here a very important statement that Joseph made. And he said, Do not interpretations belong to God. You see, Joseph was not giving himself credit. Or he was not saying to them that he has the power to interpret. He was already giving God the glory before he even asked them what they had dreamt. Before they told Joseph their dreams, God was given the glory and Joseph made that a bold statement. Do not interpretations belong to God. So Joseph feared God. Joseph trusted in God and God was with Joseph. And that's why also God gave to Joseph a clear interpretation of what the dreams meant. It was not in Joseph, Joseph's power, but God gave Joseph this gift. To interpret, God gave Joseph this wisdom um, to interpret and, 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 and what it means. So God always comes first and he always gets the glory. When we surrender, God will use us and he will work through us to bless others. That is part of our assignment is to serve others, bless others for the glory of God. Amen. So that is Genesis chapter 40 right there. We're going to go over to Genesis chapter 41 right now. Praise God. Welcome to those who recently joined in. We're reading in the book of Genesis. We're reading three chapters again. Genesis 40 through to chapter 42. We've read Genesis chapter 40 already. And now we're going on to the next chapter, which is chapter 41. All right. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh, so Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east wind, sprung up after them, and the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the God, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the God, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us, each uh, to each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. 
Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Now watch this very carefully. This is also yet again another test for Joseph to see where Joseph's heart is at. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Then again, guys, we see Joseph giving God the glory and prophesying that God will be the one to give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That is how God moves, is when he is first in your life in every area. So, God was with Joseph and Joseph trusted in the Lord. He feared God. He gave him the glory. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt, such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I awoke. Also I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven heads came up on one stalk, full and good. Then behold, seven heads with uh, seven heads, withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprung up after them, and the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one who, uh, who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, "The dreams of Pharaoh are one." God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is... The thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt, but after them seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Wow. So Joseph always acknowledged God. That is also so important. As the Bible also says, Jesus said that if you deny him, if you deny Jesus on earth before men, then you will be denied in heaven before God, before the angels. If you acknowledge Jesus before men, you'll be acknowledged in heaven before God, before the angels. Amen. Okay. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, also watch this. Joseph is giving advice because of the wisdom that has been given to him by God. The gift 
that is being given to him by God. Joseph is also not telling Pharaoh to select him. You see, Joseph was also humble. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years and let them gather all the food of those good years that are, excuse me, that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man whom is a, a man a man in a man in whom is the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Now this is God's promotion to Pharaoh. Pharaoh saw the wisdom of God on the man of Joseph. Joseph didn't just get there. He had to go through tests. He first of all had two dreams when he was with his family, his brothers and his dad. They saw that Joseph was special. He was set apart and his brothers were jealous. His brothers envied him. So he was treated very badly by most of his brothers. There was one brother in specific, Reuben, who wanted to save Joseph. But the other brothers uh, sold Joseph as a slave to the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites sold Joseph to Potiphar um, uh, as a slave. And, 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 and so Joseph was thrown down into the pit he was sold to the ishmaelites he was treated so badly and yet he always believed in god he always remained in god and god was always with him he was tested yet again well not again because that just happened to him but he was tested when he was serving in potiphar's house potiphar's wife saw joseph that he was very handsome and so Potiphar's wife wanted to lie with Joseph and Joseph honored the, the Lord. Joseph said, how can I sin against God? I will not do the sinful act. So Joseph was tested and he passed the test. Not only once, but multiple times did Potiphar's wife come to Joseph. And Joseph had to say no every single time if he wanted to continue to fear the Lord, continue to obey the Lord. And because of this, Potiphar's wife was angry and upset at Joseph because Joseph would not listen to her. And so Potiphar's wife had Joseph put in prison. She lied to Potiphar. Potiphar put him into prison. So he was treated unfairly. He was falsely accused. He was put in a prison in a dungeon. In fact, that's the word that it's used in a dungeon. But he always he always remained faithful to God. He always gave God the glory. He always remained humble. He always remained in the fear of the of the Lord. And guess what? He was promoted. He humbled himself and he was exalted. He was elevated. And that can teach us a great lesson in life to never drop our God. Always keep watch and pray so that we don't fall into temptation. 
always honor the Lord in everything that we do, always fear God in obedience as we choose to love Him, that we obey Him, we stay away from sin, we do what we need to do to stay away from sin. Live holy, live righteous for the Lord. Humble yourself and He will exalt you, He will elevate you, He will promote you. Amen. So this is a good message. Amen. All right. Glory to God. So, verse 42. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried out before him bow the knee so he set him over all the land of egypt pharaoh also said to joseph i am pharaoh and without your consent no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of egypt and pharaoh called joseph's name zaphnath Pania, or yeah, Pania, and gave and he gave him as a wife Asenath, the daughter of Poti Fura. Poti Fura, priest of On. So Joseph went out all over the land of Egypt. Think about how crazy cool this is, since Joseph is not even an Egyptian. He's a, he was a little Hebrew boy born in the house of Israel, Jacob. And now he's this Hebrew who's ruling in the whole of the land of Egypt. Quite a promotion right there. Who would have thought? Who would have thought in the whole of Egypt, in the whole of the history of Egypt, that somebody that's not of their nationality would be in charge. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He, he laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting for it was immeasurable. And Joseph and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, Whatever he tells you, whatever, sorry, whatever he says to you, do. The famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. Wow. And you see, everything that Joseph 
was given by God to interpret came to pass. It was all true because it didn't come from Joseph. It came from God. Amen. Last chapter today, guys, is Genesis chapter 42. And then we are going to head back over to the chat. Kichi San, welcome. Thanks for the heart, me and everyone who's uh, joined in recently. God bless you guys. Welcome to Bible reading session today in the book of Genesis. We're going to now read Genesis chapter 42. And then I'll put the chat back on. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt. Now think about this guys. Jacob is the father of Joseph. Jacob heard from the brothers of Joseph. Jacob's other sons. That... Um, a wolf or, or, or a ravenous wolves or, or whatever um, had devoured uh, Joseph and Jacob now still believes or still thinks that Joseph is dead. He doesn't know what's happened to Joseph. He doesn't know that he's alive and well and ruling in the land of Egypt. So keep that in mind. When Jacob saw there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there, that we may live and not die. Because obviously the famine was so severe that even in the lands or the land that Jacob and his family dwelt, there was famine in that land as well. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers. For he said, let some calamity befall him. Lest some, uh, some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. Uh, keep in mind as well that Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. He's ov obviously known as Jacob, but his name is Israel. So also keep that in mind. Now Joseph was governor over the land. And it, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. This is literally Joseph's dream that he had as a young boy. When Joseph dreamed that, um, that basically representing that his family would bow down to him, this is what's taking place right here because that they don't know that Joseph is their brother. They think that he's just some ruler in Egypt. So Joseph was the governor. Joseph was the governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So obviously Joseph now knows that it's his brothers. But the brothers don't know that Joseph is the governor. And now he is asking them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized, so Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. Obviously, he's just kind of like testing them, I guess. So, and they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. Meantime, they're speaking to the one that they think is no more anymore. But Joseph said to them, 
or claim to be. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. There it is right there, guys. This is the story of Joseph's life. He feared God. And this, this is what God is speaking to us today. He's clearly, clearly telling us and giving us grace to introduce the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? How can we learn the fear of God? How can we act in the fear of the Lord? We are learning this as we read as well. Amen. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house. But you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses. And bring your youngest brother to me, so your words may be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother. For we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Therefore his distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy, and you would not listen? Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through, through an interpreter. Aha! There's another advantage that Joseph has. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them, and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money, and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? Then they went to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the men, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me. So I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks, that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they had their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And, Job, uh, sorry, and Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me, Joseph is no more, Simeon is no more, and you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. 
put him in my hands and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you, will, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Interesting, guys. As we continue to read, we will uh, read more on the story on another live stream, which will be tomorrow. But that's the three live streams the three um chapters that we have finished reading in the old testament for today guys and we've learned a lot i hope that some of you guys have also picked some things up from this reading and gained more gained more understanding of how god works how important it is to have the fear of god etc amen so glory to god guys that is bible reading for this afternoon uh it is currently 415 in south africa so i don't know what time it is for you guys but god bless you all tanya thank you for the rose and um i'm going to leave the the chat open right now so if you guys have any questions if you have any prayer requests feel free to put that in the chat richard god bless you man glory to god <laughs> the lord is good guys the lord is so good Yes. No, don't thank me, Diana. Glory to God. <laughs> um, that's it, guys. You know, God speaks to us through His Word. And the message that God has been giving us recently is to understand the fear of the Lord and to learn how to act in the fear of the Lord as well. Yes, thank God for the spiritual food. That's what it is. You guys just received a meal, a spiritual meal. Um, you know, and, 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 and think about this as well. Why should we wait for the weekend to be spiritually fed? Your lives are, are not going to grow spiritually. Your lives are going to die spiritually if you only expect to be fed spiritually once a week. So going to church once a week is great. But reading the Bible and receiving spiritual food every day is nourishment to our spirit, spiritual lives. And it is growth so that we can grow strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, Patricia, welcome. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. If that's um, uh, in Spanish, please, uh, or whatever language it is. Please translate for me. Glory to God. So, praise God, guys. Um, there will also be another live stream tonight for New Testament Bible reading. We're going to read in the book of Mark, I think it is. Let me just double check how many uh, yeah, chapters there are in Matthew. So, yeah. So, we finished the book of Matthew. We're going to read in the book of mark so we're going to start reading in the gospel of mark tonight just two chapters um so uh, keep in mind if you want to join it will be 8 p.m south african standard time and um yeah laratu amen yeah i think you already said that sorry i already read that but uh, awesome stuff glory to god guys amen AJ, welcome to the love. God bless you. And uh, I'd like to pray a prayer in general for you guys before I end this live as well. And uh, if you have any uh, prayer requests, feel free to put that in the chat. It's not only me, but there's others on this live as well that we usually come together. We usually pray together for people. Amen. So praise God and and so don't be afraid if you have a need if you have a request don't be afraid uh, have faith that god will hear have faith that god will come through and that is what pleases the lord the bible says without faith it's impossible to please god hi jordan god bless you the time is 3 15 in sweden 
Uh, Joseph's story is amazing. Sandra, indeed, yes. Joseph's story is awesome. Um, and we can learn so much from the life of Joseph. So, yeah, it seems like your time zone is one hour behind my time zone. So that's pretty cool. We do not have daylight savings time. So um, the hours don't change. So, yeah. Happiness. Welcome to the live. Did you go live yesterday afternoon? I need to double check if I did because I had skipped one afternoon. I believe I did go live yesterday afternoon. Um, I think I did to read uh, Genesis 37 to 39. I just will double check for you. Just logging into TikTok here to see uh, so today let me just pause that okay Genesis 37 to 39 on the 16th today is the 17th so it was yesterday it was yesterday that uh, we did bible reading in the afternoon yes and then last night we did matthew 27 to 28 which finished the book of matthew finished the gospel of matthew so tonight we're going to the gospel of mark amen awesome stuff guys um yeah, sorry, I'm, with all due respect, I'm, I'm not into anime. I don't watch anime. I, I'm not into that. So, yeah, I, I don't even know, like, anime characters. Maybe maybe one or two. But, yeah, um, yeah, with all due respect, uh, I would rather not. But thank you for asking. God bless you. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Um Uh, remember me from the first grade. I don't know, man. What's your name? Maybe if you tell me your name, I will see if I remember you. Because I was I actually when I was in in a grade one class at Redham, and uh, because I changed curriculums, I had to do grade one again, which was kind of yeah. I think I did grade one twice, which is kind of a bummer. But anyway. So what did humans do before Jesus? What religion should they have followed then? Good question. And it's really then again not about religion. Religion is deceptive. Religion is a trap. The world have corrupted the actual meaning of religion. Religion in the book of James is defined as the act of helping widows and orphans. Religion is not supposed to be what people call it today people have co corrupted the word religion but anyway to get that out of the way first of all what did people do before jesus came to the earth it is a very good question and in fact i would tell you what scripture says that god is the same yesterday today and forever so god established a covenant with abraham god said that abraham uh he actually changed his name from abram or Abram, I think it's Abram, I say Abram. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham because Abraham would become the father of many nations. God made a covenant with Abraham. And so God called Abraham and his descendants to be his people. And because all the other nations, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Phil Philistines, all the other people, they were all so wicked. But God called Abraham to be his people. Israel, the people of Israel. Abraham had a son, Isaac. Isaac had a son, Jacob. Jacob's name became Israel. And that's where the word or the name Israel came from. Came from Jacob. So... 
the people of Israel who are called the Jews are God's people and God had a plan for his people to be uh, with him and to have a relationship with their king. God wanted to be the king of Israel. But they complained. They made their own idols. They wanted their own human king. They didn't want to make God their king. It was evident in their actions, in the way they lived. But God also didn't forget the Gentiles because even though there were those who were not descendants of Abraham, God still loved them. And so it is said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that not only the children of Israel who actually turned against God are God's people, but that the Gentiles could also be God's people, that there will be no longer Jew or Greek, that they will be together. And that was God's plan. So God had this plan in mind because God could see the hearts of the people, the hearts of the children of Israel, that they um, sinned against God by making their own idols, they made their own uh, way of living, and God tried to get them to uh, have grace on them so that they can have sacrifices been made for them for the atonement of their sins. But no sacrifice could be made. No sacrifice, no shedding of an animal's blood could be shed for to, to, to take away a man's sin. It was only covered for. So it was a mess. It was corrupted. And, and, and because of this, for God so loved the world that if he didn't send Jesus, people would just become more and more wicked and they would just die. And they would be thrown into hell fire for eternity. But for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who would be the only one to fix all the mess of the Old Testament. That's why God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Because as God has, God wanted people to be, God wanted people to see God as their king. But they didn't want that. So God made another way because man could not do. Man could not save themselves. So Jesus was sent to the earth. And after Jesus died on the cross, there was a new covenant, the blood covenant. Now this blood that was shed by the Lord Jesus has been shed once and for all so that the sins of the world can be forgiven. So that those people, now that the people of the earth, Jew or Gentile, Jew or Greek, can have an opportunity to receive Jesus so that he can come in and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That is God's way of saving you. That is God's way of saving the world. But people in this day and age reject Jesus. They mock Jesus. They hate on Jesus. And God cannot do anything for them. So God knew there would still be wicked people. God knew that. But if God didn't send Jesus, then we would all miss out. We would all probably be wicked right now. We would all probably not be not make it you know because there were people who were counted as righteous before jesus came there were people but they couldn't go to heaven because there's no way to heaven except through jesus christ so what happened to the people who were counted as righteous the people who were faithful in god the people who did walk with god like abraham like isaac like jacob like noah like jeremiah like david like Daniel, like Joseph, all these men that walked with God, all these men that that God God was with these men and they lived for God, they honored God, they gave God the glory, they were faithful in their ways, they had faith and they believed in God. To them it was counted to them as righteousness, but they still had corrupted sinful nature that not that no one could sacrifice enough animal blood 
to take away that sin, that corruption in a man's soul. So what happened to those people who were counted as righteous? They went to a place called Abraham's bosom. It's also known as paradise. And that's why Jesus said to one of the thieves or one of the robbers on, yeah, the thieves on the cross, he said, um, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Is because Jesus, after he died and after that thief on the cross died, that thief on the cross, cross had said to Jesus, uh, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And the other one didn't say that. So the, 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 um, the, uh, one specific robber on the cross next to Jesus, he um, acknowledged Jesus and he asked for mercy in a way. And, and that was all that it took is that the robber asked, remember me in your kingdom. And that saved his soul because he went to paradise. He, he still yet couldn't go to heaven because when Jesus died on the cross, he went into the earth as, a, as a Jesus said, the son of Jonah, I will give you that as uh, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So Jesus will be in the, in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. And so Jesus went inside the belly of the earth, in the heart of the earth. What was in the heart of the earth? If you read in the Old Testament, you will know that it wasn't only hell in the heart of the earth. It was also a place called Abraham's bosom, a place called paradise. If you read about the, the, the rich man in Hades or the rich man in Sheol, I don't know what word they use, but the rich man in hell and Lazarus, who was treated like a dog on earth by the rich man. And the rich man asked and said, if Lazarus can just drop his tongue, drop his finger in water so that, uh, dip his finger in water so he can drop water into the mouth of the rich man because he's thirsty. And that couldn't happen. There's no ways that could happen because there was a great chasm that separated hell from Abraham's bosom. So when Jesus died, he went to Abraham's bosom and he was with that robber on the cross he was with him in paradise on that same day that is why that is what is meant by what jesus said and a lot of people don't know this a lot of people don't see that because they're limiting their own minds their own thinking they don't understand and only by the grace of god that god has revealed this to me and to many others as well and so jesus when jesus rose from the dead um, Jesus paid the price. He conquered sin, death, and the grave. And now there was an opportunity for people to, through Jesus, go to heaven. So Jesus also had to preach the gospel in Abraham's bosom. Jesus had to tell them about the kingdom, tell them that there has been made a way now. God has sent the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And now that the people in Abraham's bosom could receive Jesus as their Lord, as their Savior, and now they can go to heaven. So then uh, paradise, Abraham's bosom was emptied. The people who received Jesus, who accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ in Abraham's bosom, went to be with their father. And that is what, God, what God's plan is for all of us. He is our father. He wants to come uh, back into relationship with us he wants us to make him our father so that we can be his people and he will be our god he will be our king forever and jesus is one with god so he is our king amen so that that that's the story happiness i usually go live at 3 p.m and 8 p.m south african standard time thank you minky uh glory to god um for the camera setup, he blessed me with it. Jesus said, I'm the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Praise Jesus, man. Wow. 
Cool. All right, guys. Um, let me pray for you, and then I'm going to be wrapping things up, okay? Praise the Holy Spirit for that, Diana. Praise the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise Jesus for that. All glory to God. I don't take any credit. Let's let's pray, and then I'm going to be wrapping things up. Amen? Heavenly Father, God, I come before you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you know that there are those on this life that have chosen not to believe in you. There are those on this life that mock you. There are those on this life that don't believe in you. But Lord, I just pray that you'd have grace on them. Forgive them, Lord, for they don't know what they are doing. One day when they see the truth, Lord, I pray that it won't be too late, but that you, Jesus, will be revealed to those who are lost. That you would have grace on them, Father God, by your grace that they would have an opportunity to receive you, Jesus, that they would see the truth and be set free, Lord. I just pray for their salvation. And Lord, I thank you for everyone else on this love and everyone on this love as a whole. I pray that you'd bless them, Father God. Bless those on this love. Come through for them, provide for their needs, for what needs that are needed to be taken care of right now. If they need healing in their body, if they need healing in their homes, if they need healing emotionally, if they need healing financially, I just pray for healing in all areas, Father God, according to your will, let it be done. Let, let it be released in Jesus' name. Breakthrough released in Jesus' name. Delay broken in Jesus' name. Demonic strongholds broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you are teaching us. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can uh, learn how to fear you. And I pray, Lord, that the fear of you will increase in our lives, Lord. As we hunger more for you, help us to grow deeper into a uh, greater understanding and a greater relationship with you, Father. Help us to see the truth. Help us to see what you have for us, Lord. That we can trust in you and know that you are God. And that you're always with us. That you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And that we are not called to be afraid, but that you will go with us wherever we go. So we give you the glory and we thank you, Father God, for doing a mighty work in our lives on this earth. All the glory, all the praise and honor to you, Father God. To you it is given, for you are worthy, you are holy. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, God bless you guys. Um. Yeah, I pray for your exams, uh, that it goes well in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so I love you all with the love of Christ. I pray for the peace of Jesus to be with you guys. And I pray for those who don't know God, that, that for the sake of your eternity... For the sake of your soul, may God have grace on your soul. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys. God loves you. Jesus loves you. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through Jesus. Amen. Adios, amigos. Until later, I'll see you next time. God bless and peace.